Hey, what's going on guys? So for today, we got a blast from the past. This is a Dengeki Hobby issue from 2009, October 2009. I don't necessarily want to say it's a vintage magazine because it's not really vintage, but it's pretty old, 14 years old now at this point almost. And so we're gonna be taking a look back in this one and there's quite a lot of stuff in here. It's a monthly magazine, so there's gonna be you know a lot of advertisements and things like that for just new products coming out at the time. But it should be interesting to see you know what was coming out at the time. As for like Gunpla stuff from Bandai, of course, but then there's a lot of other stuff in here uh, as well. Everything that was coming out from the different hobby companies. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And right here on the cover, I love this full armor version of the Gundam 7th. It's such a cool kit and it's a great HGUC kit. Unfortunately, we don't have this as an actual model kit available. Hopefully maybe someday we'll get Bandai to revisit that kit or something. So I don't know, maybe they'll make a P Bandai variant of the HG that has all this extra equipment, everything on it would be very cool. It's sort of like the G Falcon, is that what it's called? For the double X? Something sort of similar like to that type of equipment, but very cool. The uh, price for this issue, 880 yen. That's uh, with tax, so like 800 yen for this here on the back. Some stuff here celebrating the 30th anniversary. And even though this came out in 2009, which was the 30th anniversary year, I don't think that there, there's really too much in here about the uh, Gundam 30th anniversary, although we'll probably see mention of it a couple times. We've got this really awesome fold out poster here for the heavy armed full armor Gundam 7th right there, final stage. Oops, I almost ripped that a little bit there. Oops, gotta be careful. But that looks really awesome on the backside. Oh yeah, this is cool too. On the backside, the Evangelion Unit 1 test tie. This is a super cool poster. This was also on the front, you could see it right there. But that's a pretty cool poster. And I would have, this is like one of those ones where you would have a really hard time choosing uh, you know, if you wanted to put this up on your wall. I'm not sure which one I would go with, although that Evangelion one is pretty cool, I've gotta say. And there will be more photos of that in here later on. But all right, moving on here. So this is a, a monthly publication. There's gonna be a lot of advertisements in here, but it'll be interesting to see like kind of what was coming out at the time. So here's some stuff from Tako uh, Takara Tomi Arts. So there's some different uh, various merchandise. Interestingly right here, some various mecha, one version of the Eleanos, which I'll be reviewing actually, not this particular version, but I, ha I recently got one that was reprinted from Plum uh, that I wanna review for you guys. I did review one version of the Eleanos a couple years ago, but uh, they newly reprinted one version, so I'll be reviewing that. And also the Vulcan. There is a new uh, reprint, again, just a reprint of the Vulcan that also recently came out from Plum as well. So I've got a couple of Lenos kits that I'm going to be reviewing pretty soon uh, for you guys in the queue. So something to look forward to from that. Uh, and another thing that's also pretty, you know, very timely here from Kotobukiya, here's their Gespenst Mark II. We, of course, recently had the HG Gespenst from Bandai come out, the black version, although I gotta say this dark green version of it does look pretty cool. And there is also the P-Bandai version, which I'm not sure exactly the name or number of that, but it's another variation of that from uh, P-Bandai, which is blue. And then down here, also from Kotobukiya, and I know we're gonna see some more pictures of this later, I think, or either that or a different one, but um, um, this is the Noblesse Oblige. Not to be confused with the artifact set from Genshin Impact, but this is... Not to be confused with the artifact set from Genshin Impact, but these are a couple sets here. That's also the Vanguard uh, Over to Boost set there uh, from Armored Core. And we have the new Armored Core game on the way as well. So Kurobukiya hopefully will be making some new Armored Core kits. I'm not sure if they will. At the very least, hopefully reprinting some of their existing Armored Core kits. So hopefully we'll see some more news about that. Uh, probably pretty soon, I would imagine, since that game is on the way now. We've got some Votoms kits here from Wave, which I've fairly recently taken a look at a couple of those but here are some older ones right there some other stuff from wave corporation some figures and things like that and now here's some gumpla so it's not going to take long to get to the gumpla in a magazine like this and the majority of like the new stuff is going to be featuring gumpla stuff as that's just kind of the main thing right and this looks like this is that figure line now i'm drawing a blank i can't remember the name of it and i can't seem to find the name of it anywhere here i'm sure it's here i'm just like missing it but um it's the small like candy toy uh, figures that Bandai was doing at the time, and this is the unicorn in destroy mode here in that line, but also uh, some sample images of before the unicorn head bust came out, and it looks like that was maybe coming out in the January uh, issue following this. So this is October, and then a couple months later in January is when you could get that, which was a magazine pack-in exclusive with Dengeki Hobby. 
uh, that you could get, and it's a very cool uh, head bus model kit. And then you can put the unicorn on top of that. This was actually later sold together with the HGC unicorn kit. You could buy a set. I think it was with like the titanium plated version of the HG kit you could get. It comes with the head bust, I believe, if I remember correctly. But it's a cool bust, transforms and everything. I believe it's 148 scale, I think, is the scaling for that. Here we have, of course, the HGC Kshatriya. And 10 years later, we're still waiting on a 100 scale version from Bandai, unfortunately. Not sure if that's ever going to happen. I know a lot of people want it as an MG. Personally, I would love if it was just an RE100. That would make it so that it wasn't quite as expensive, and I think it would still do everything that it needs to do, so long as it has like some sort of locking mechanism for the binders, similar to what the HGUC has, something like that. And just be nice to have that in 100 scale. But I don't know, I guess if it was RE100, it might not match in detail style to the unicorn so i guess if it was a master grade it would probably m more closely match like if you have them like side by side you know detail aesthetic wise uh, with the H with the uh, master grade unicorn but speaking of the hd unicorn here we've got the worldly robot damash unicorn down there uh, some of the manga unicorn manga series down here and the super hcm pro and then just some artwork here for the hg um, unicorn in destroy mode and unicorn mode right there over here digital grade I'm not sure what that is. There's some more unicorn information uh, some here about the unicorn OVA series and then we're getting into the RX 78-7 Gundam the full armor or the Gundam 7th I guess and then we have it in full armor later on but this is just the regular Gundam 7th here. A very cool Gundam and it looks like this is actually based off of the Gundam Verka master grade kit and modified into the Gundam 7th, which is pretty awesome. Really cool design, and I love it in like the basic form. So yeah, if Bandai were to ever uh, release anything more of the Gundam 7th, honestly, like a, a Master Grade would be awesome. Something that allows you to build it as its base form, or the full armor, or the heavy full armor version would be pretty cool, because even the base form is really interesting. Uh, and so here that is, and as you can see, I mean like, at a glance, it's not that different from the RX-782, but I mean, once you look at all the details and everything, you can see, you know, everything is different. Obviously, obviously, the shield is very different, but, you know, generally the color placement is all the same and the general kind of silhouette is not too different, but very cool, um, different RX-78 version there. So really nice modeling here. I'm not sure if it says who this is by. Oh yeah, modeled by Kazuhisa Tamura. So there you go or your guys' reference in case anyone was wondering. But we got a bunch more photos of that, including some work in progress photos over here on this page. We got a few work in progress photos that show some of the modifications and everything. Obviously a lot of modifications and scratch building required uh, for a lot of this, but that looks awesome. Then we've got the origin of ARC 78-7 Gundam. So a little bit here with some very nice artwork for the 78-4, 78-5, 78-6 Mudrock. We got that as a P-Bandai uh, HG exclusive. That was nice. And obviously the ARC 78 1, 2, and 3 up there as well. So you get kind of the lineage of the RX-78, and there is more after the 7th. The 7th is not the end one, um, but it looks like that's as far as it's covering here on this page anyway. Here you can see the artwork here of the heavy full armor 7th right there. And let's see, a lot of really cool illustration work to see on there, and now we can see it as the, this is the HGUC version, so a uh, painted, nice uh, painted build here of the HGUC full armor Gundam 7th. So yeah, really cool kit. I can highly recommend it. I reviewed it years ago. I would love to revisit it and kind of actually do some more work on it, do a, a custom build on it, because I really like the design. The color scheme is not really for me. Like some of the color placement, I don't really quite like on it, but I've seen it, you know, obviously in uh, different color schemes and different modifications and stuff just around online and in magazines and stuff over the years. And it's a really cool model. I think just with a little bit of color modifications to that, it'd be really nice. But here's the heavy armed, version of that so with like kind of all this extra equipment everything on there super cool it's basically like a deep striker of sorts with legs actually instead of booster legs so kind of very cool design there i love the big fuel tanks the massive cannon and everything on that it's pretty awesome we got a bunch of really cool photos of that detail photos and different poses here as much as you can really pose it i mean for a 
kit like that, it's not going to be super posable. All right, and we have the Ifrit Noct, which we also have a P Bandai version of that now in HG form, but this is, let's see, a Bandai 144 scale high grade Universal Century conversion modeled by Hiroshi Imizu. I love the Ifrit Noct, it's such a cool design. I love the P Bandai kit. It's, you know, it's a shame that it's P Bandai, but it's such a really great kick and highly, highly recommend it for you guys. Any version of the Ifrit really, but the Noct especially, I really particularly like. Here you can see kind of what it looked like. So it's a lot of scratch building and, you know, custom modifications and everything to go into making this because at the time there wasn't any version of the HG, uh, of the Ifrit available in 1 in 44 scale. So not like you could just modify a different version of that, but here you can see the Ifrit and the Ifrit custom uh, artwork for those down there. But yeah, the Noct is a really cool design. So that's really awesome to see. Some other Gundam stuff here looks like related to the Battlefield record 0081 and some different um, mobile suits and characters and stuff from that. Here we got that uh, new Gundam bus that came out and there's also a Sasabi bus and I think there's one more as well. I know it's, uh, I'm drawing a blank camera what the other one is. I think there's three that came out and I believe it's the Four Mania was the name of this line. Very expensive bus. I think it's the GPO one actually now that I think about it. Yeah, I think they're 148 scale uh, bust figures, not model kits unfortunately, but uh, just like a figure thing and it has all of these kind of accessories like uh, opening hatches and stuff and then like these crew members that you can have on these wires kind of floating around as if the bust is in like a space hangar or something like that so pretty cool. All right now our special feature on MG coming out at a pretty interesting time now when we're not really getting too much MGs these days especially as you know non-exclusive items or non-variants or anything like that, but here we have the MG Exia and also the MG Turn A. So the MG Turn A was the 100th uh, Master Grade kit, so it's kind of a quite special one. Here we have a custom modified one. I can't say that I'm a fan of the modification made to the head. There's obviously going to be a number of modifications to this, as you can see like the base kit uh, next to this modified one there. There's definitely a difference in height, so you know there's a, different modifications that have gone into this and you can see some of them I guess there's going to be some more work in progress images here uh, to show about that but generally it looks mostly the same the most notable difference I would say has to be the head and you know obviously the mustache is a bit of a meme but to get rid of the mustache to that degree well it's still like keeping the mustache but it's just like trimmed it down I don't know I'm not really that into it to be honest but the changing of the uh, red on the shield to blue I think looks pretty cool and also the modifications to the rifle extending out those parts and also again changing it from red to blue looks pretty awesome i gotta say the feet as well so basically got rid of almost all the red on the kit except for here in the stomach and a little bit of red there on the knees and in the face but it's a really beautiful build i gotta say i love the colors on this the extension of the proportions of it making it longer sleeker looking it does look really great i just don't really like this modification to the head now it just looks like a, a baseball up there so uh, the mask feature on that is kind of interesting though so that's kind of cool i have to say here we have some more photos of this again comparing the original kit to the modified version the feet the legs the rifle the shield um, some scribing some work in progress over here on the side and then we've got an arc 782 version 2.0 another really great kit a little custom modified version of that here and this would have been before the 3.0 was released so this is basically uh, taking the 2.0 and making the 2.0 look like the one-to-one -one scale version which as you can see here in this picture that's the one one-to-one -one scale arc 782 gundam but that's before it was moved to its position in front of gundam base it's now not there anymore now the unicorn's there but when i first went to japan which was actually in 2009 just a couple months before this issue came out it was in um June, July, uh, that time in 2009, uh, I saw the Gundam there and it was yeah, in a different place. It was in Odaiba there, but it was a different part of the island, not in front of the Gundam base building. So it was pretty cool to see it at that time. So yeah, he basically took the 2.0 and tried to make it look like that. And obviously the 3.0 came out and the whole point of the 3.0 was it was uh, following the same design as the one-to-one -one Gundam. This is pretty cool to see a modified 2.0 to look you know similar. It doesn't look exactly the same but it still looks pretty close to that, which is pretty cool. And you can see some comparison images down here, the base kit versus the modified version here and here. 
front, back, head. So a lot of details added to that because the 2.0 doesn't have a whole lot of exterior detail on it. I love the 2.0, but you know, if you like a lot of exterior details, definitely go for the 3.0. Definitely has a lot more of that. And so you can see uh, a lot of details that he had to add to make it look more similar to the one-to-one -one scale version. So that's very cool. Some work in progress over here as well. And then some other master grade new kit all catalog. So some other master grades that were coming out. These are all versions of the 2.0 Zaku. Actually, the 2.0 um, Black Tristar's version, Johnny Ridden's version, the Mind Layer version, Zaku Cannon, Shin Matsunaga version. So fantastic. All of those, any of those I would recommend. We've got the 2.0 Gelgoog, the Igloo version of the 2.0 Zaku 2, the 2.0 Goof and then some other new master grades that were coming out at the time, the Unicorn Verka, the Shinanju Verka, the Gym version 2.0, the G Armor, and the G3 uh, version of that, or they've got a prototype version of that, or the real type color, <laughs> I'll get it right eventually, the real type color version of the Gundam and a G Armor right there. I guess this is some like helpful tip about how to um, build the pipe parts and how to paint the pipe parts here for your 2.0 Zaku kits, which yeah, is not fun to do. They got some Master Grade Seed kits here, the Impulse, the Sword Impulse. Uh, I think that's what Lucas's uh, Strike IWSP, I believe. The uh, Strike Gundam and the Infinite Justice, the Destiny and the Full Burst Mode Destiny. All still, I mean, pretty popular master grade kits even though we've got some uh, much newer much nicer master grade seed and seed destiny releases but those are all still pretty popular the exia though um, i'm sure it's still pretty popular and i don't find anything wrong with it to be honest but i know it does get a little bit of grief from time to time just because of its feet are a little bit weird uh, what goes on in the feet there other than that still a fantastic kit if you ask me but that's a really beautiful looking build here of the master grade exia it looks really really nice they're super clean and it has like slightly glossy. It's not gloss, it's like a semi-gloss, but anyway, it looks really nice. The finish on this, very clean. So that looks really cool. And again, you get a little bit of work in progress images over here, showing of that. Some more work in progress, some more detail images there of the Exia. And then versus Astray special here. This is obviously not going to be master grade, but this is the Gale Strike, which is just a 100 scale non-grade kit. Uh, and I've never built any of these, to be honest, but the Gale Strike is pretty interesting. They're basically these, um, this series of 100 scale kits here from the Versus Astray series. Um, they're basically kind of like taking the kit and just like moving the parts around. So these parts, which were a part of the backpack of the Ale Strike, now are on the shoulder. The shield is now like a part of the backpack, which is weird. The Verda Buster is another example uh, of one of the mobile suits in this line where they just basically kind of take the equipment and like move it around to down different parts of the Gundam, essentially. Uh, but they're kind of interesting designs. The, um, like here's the Hail Buster. Maybe that's the one that I was thinking of. Uh, not the Verita Buster. Or was it? Anyway, but this is the Hail Buster right here. So pretty cool series. Quite interesting. Unfortunately, not Master Grades, but just 100 scale non-grades. Would be cool to get maybe some P-Bandai. And, you know, of course, you would hope not P-Bandai. But in all likelihood, they would be P-Bandai if we got Master Grade versions of these at some point. Um, or some, like, new HG versions could be kind of cool as well. Don't think that would happen, but here's some other ones, some other examples right there and the model kit versions of those. So it looks like maybe those were not out yet at the time or yeah, had just come out in some of the case. This is September for the release date for that one, September as well. This one is October. So coming out at the month of the release of this issue actually, well, because these issues come out uh, like a month beforehand, this issue actually came out in September, even though it's the October issue. But here we got about the Master Grade Astray Blue Frame, that MG kit. So you got all the prototype images. This is just before that came out. What was the release date for that? In October, okay. So yeah, it was coming out just the month after this issue was coming out. More about uh, Versus Astray. Uh, Gundam Double OP, second season which was just a novel, I believe. And so we just kind of have some different images. Uh, that's the Kestrel, I believe, which was also a magazine packing kit you can get in one, one, in one to 144 scale. Uh, the Gundam Artemy, which I know there's a resin kit of that, but I've never seen any um, model kit of that, of course. Not in any uh, plastic version, I should say. And speaking of resin garage kits, there's an uh, advertisement here for a garage kit of the Gundam Plutone, which we now have a P-Bandai HGO. So yeah, 
uh, which is awesome too. Another really great P Bandai kit. I know I'm talking about in this magazine review, I'm talking a lot about, you know, fantastic P Bandai kits, but what can I say? I don't know, there's a lot. And there's the Rizal. I think I said Kestrel before, but it's actually the Rizal. Sorry about that. The Kestrel is different, but yes, there's a model kit of that. This is not that model kit though. I'm not really sure what that is, or maybe that is, but I'm not sure why it's blue. Anyway, maybe that's a different version of that. I thought the kit is molded in white, but anyway. We got the 144 scale Reborns Gundam coming out. So here's a segment about that. So we've since had a different variation of that from Gundam Build Fighters come out. Uh, but that's a really popular one that I know that a lot of people would like to see in Master Grade form as well. I'm not sure if we ever will, but I think if Bandai were to ever make a Master Grade of the Reborns Gundam, I think it would be very, very popular. So <laughs> I think that's something that definitely has a likelihood of coming out at some point. The HG Susanoo here from Gundam 00. Another really cool kit based on everything that I've ever seen about it. I've not actually built it, but it does look like a pretty cool kit. I know one that's also tends to be pretty popular as far as I know. People like it. The Gades here, which is a really cool kit. Uh, I really like this one. And the other different versions of that are really cool HG kits from Gundam 00. Some of my favorite from that line, I think I would say, just design wise and everything. It's really cool kits. So I like those a lot. Advertisement here for Gundam Ace with the Elmeth on it. Got some other advertisement stuff here. And then back to Gundam. New kit review here of the HGUC Jagan. So back when we were getting the original Jagan, and now we've got a lot of different variants of the HG Jagan at this point. Most of them P Bandai, but not all. But here's when the original came out. And this is a very interestingly painted uh, sample build of the Jagan, with it being a little bit kind of darker. Usually for like these sample builds, for like when the new kits come out, like here of the Reborns Gundam, for example, I mean, they basically go for like, you know, a stock sample build, you know, like all regular colors, very clean paint job. But for this one, they've gone for like a little bit darker color. It's very, very slightly weathered on it and it's more kind of shaded and everything. So kind of interesting. The sample build's a little bit different for that one. You got some SD BB Senshi Sengokuden stuff here. Uh, of the Noble Gundam, right there, of the God Gundam. I don't really know very much about these releases at all, so I couldn't really tell you too much about it, but pretty cool. Some more of that stuff, and interesting how um, this kind of style has been very popular again recently with the uh, SDW Heroes line as of late. So these, there was a lot of releases in this style at the time, and then recently we've seen quite a few as well. Okay, now about the PG, the PG00 riser was on the way at that time. Let's see, looks like at the time of this issue, it was still just in the design phase. So here's is the Gundam terminal report here, where we've got some uh, sor uh, swords and GN drive uh, O riser, some illustrations kind of of everything. So it looks like that the release date was not yet announced for this at the time of the PG00 riser. This would have been, I guess, just pretty shortly after its original announcement, I would guess. Uh, so not too much about that, but some cool illustrations there. Uh, some Robot Damashi stuff here now, and some other Gundam merchandise, mostly stuff from 00, it looks like. Some other HD releases here from Gundam 00, Master Grade Gun Tank over here, HG, um, Universal Century Ground Gundam set there. This is the Ground War set that comes with like the hover tank and the gym head uh, for the Ground Gundam. So that's a pretty cool one. Next page here has a bunch of SD stuff, some other Gundam uh, kind of figure toys there it looks like, based on Okawara designs, it would look like there. And all right, now we're, we spent quite a lot of time going through this. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here through the rest of this as this is just advertisements for different merchandise and different things uh, like that. Uh, Gundam War card game, for example. Bandai Hobby Pro Shop, <laughs> super duper, super fine print on that. Uh, SD G Gundam related stuff here. It's very cool. All right, let's see what other kind of stuff. Because there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here that's also non-Gundam. We spent a lot of time looking at the Gundam stuff. I want to take a look at some of the other non-Gundam items. There's some different character figures and stuff. Uh, 
here we have the Evangelion 2.0, the 3D 2.0. So this is a customized kit. What was the base kit used for this? I saw that it's customized, but I'm not sure what the base kit used for this is. We'll see if we can figure it out, but really cool display for this. Uh, just kind of how it's mounted and how it's displayed here with the spear and uh, on this kind of block there, which I want to say is a wood block, probably underneath there is wood, but it's got like a kind of like a stucco pattern on it. It's kind of interesting. But modeled by Tomokazu Mochizuki. Really cool build here. And let's see. I'm going to guess that this is modeled uh, based on the Bandai HG Gundam kit. And yeah, it actually is wood. So you can see there's the wood block before the uh, texture is added on to that. Honestly, the wood block looks really nice though, to be fair. But after adding the texture on it, he painted it with this kind of pattern on it, which looks really nice. But it is based on the MG, or based on the HG Evangelion kit from Bandai, it looks like to me. But then uh, some modification here done to this just to be able to do the pose and have the proportions and shapes and everything, just kind of exactly how he wanted it to look, I guess to look more accurate and to look more appropriate to the design. But that looks really cool. Uh, but unfortunately, not too much else on that build, just a couple of pages, and then it's on to the next one, which is the Provisional Unit 5. This one from the 2.0 film that you can see kind of at the very beginning of that. Very unique design. It didn't, I, I didn't really like it. It's kind of grown on me a little bit, but I don't know, Evangelion fans, what do you guys think about this one? It's very strange, uh, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, seems not as useful as like a, a regular Evangelion. It seems like very niche in terms of its like, uh, I don't know, combat abilities, but it's interesting anyway. And uh, I would mean, I would have to guess this is like a full scratch build or something. I don't know what this is based off of. Pretty impressive though, either way, looks quite cool. Then we've got uh, more of the 3D gallery, uh, some different kind of scenes recreated from the rebuild film there with some different models, some nice cool photography. Uh, resin garage kit here of Asuka, it looks like maybe. It's either a resin garage kit or a, a like a PVC figure that's just been modified and customized and everything. Looks really quite nice. All right, some more Evangelion stuff here. We've got, I believe these are Revoltech uh, Evangelion figures. And then the Neon Genesis Evangelion three years after Anima, which I guess is another kind of like side story novelization kind of uh, spin-off novelization sort of thing. Here we got uh, Gendo and a big wall of text here. Uh, this really awesome illustration here. I've seen this many, many years ago. I guess it probably would have been around the time as to like when this uh, illustration came out, when this publication came out. But I don't remember the exact like uh, model number here for this particular Evangelion. Super cool though. Love that design. Really cool illustration. I, I would love to have an actual poster of this illustration. It would be very cool. Awesome weaponry and the like flight backpack for that is super, super cool. I love that. So that's gonna continue on here a little bit. This one I believe is possibly the model kit from Bandai and I can't remember the name of it. I think it's like the Type F or something like that uh, version of the Evangelion Eva 01. I actually have this kit and I've had it in my backlog for a long, long, long time. And I've never built it. I should actually get it out and build it here one of these days, but it's a, kit from Bandai. I thought it came out before 2009, but I guess this looks like it. So I guess this is maybe before that kit came out from Bandai. Um, so this is the prototype images there, obviously, of that model kit. Um, some more Evangelion stuff here. This is the GNN, Gainax News Network, uh, Evangelion character figures and stuff. There's the like Eva 02 in its kind of beast form there as a, I would assume that would be like a resin garage kit or something. And then we have the standing tortoise here, the Wave 124 scale construction kit modeled by Satoshi Mori. Really cool build here. Really nice painting and weathering here on this. Really interesting weathering, which looks super, super nice. And then it's got this kind of cloth cover there up at the back, which looks cool. And this kind of net, I can't tell if that's like a chain or a net cloth kind of thing hanging off the back there as well which looks really nice. And interestingly, there's, I believe there's a new version of the Standing Tortoise from Wave coming out, which is the version which comes with a pilot figure inside of it. I think it's called, it's like, it's like the ST version, I think. If I'm remembering correctly, that's a new version of the Wave model kit that is on the way in the near future. And we've taken a look at a couple of the different uh, Wave Votoms kits in uh, recent history. So 
If you guys are interested, you can take a look back at some of those. This is in a larger scale though, I believe. Those new ones that I've taken a look at, I think are smaller than 124th scale. I think they were like 148 scale, if I remember correctly. So this is larger, so it's gonna be a larger model kit with more detail. You got a couple of work in progress photos over here, which are really interesting looking, but really beautiful build there for that one. Really nice painting and weathering and everything on that. Next up, we get into some Macross stuff, which I'm sorry to say guys, Macross is not my area of expertise, but I can show this to you. We can take a look through some of this Macross stuff. Cool color scheme here on this one, the VF, uh, YF25 here for this one, the orange, white, and black color scheme looks pretty cool. There it is, transformed. And some more stuff here. Uh, really cool like scene. It almost looks like it's marshmallows used for this like uh, diorama scene there with the different fighters flying there. What's supposed to look like clouds, but it looks a bit more like marshmallows to me. So it's more macro stuff here. Uh, card game and I think this is probably a robot damashi, something like that. Some sort of figure. And character figures. These look like, uh, I believe these are DX uh, Chogokin, I wanna say, for those, although I'm not sure about that. More Macross stuff, quite a lot here. It seems almost like there was more stuff coming out at the time than there is more recently. Maybe this is closer to when uh, like the newer series was going on, this is the Robot Spirit stuff. But again, yeah, I'm sorry to say, don't know too much else about that. Here we've got uh, Max's Dragon R1, and really cool timing here for this one as we just had the Dragon R1 from Bandai uh, HD kit come out last year, and I re reviewed it not too long ago, and it's an awesome kit. Highly recommend that kit for you guys. Really, really nice HD kit from Bandai. So um, this is going way back to, obviously this is not the Bandai version, of course, but looks like Max's build there of the Dragon R1. That's really cool. And we've got the new Armored Core game on the way. Here is uh, Armored Core Variable Infinity, Kotobuki 172nd scale kit of the Noblesse Oblige. And I've built a couple of the Kotobuki Armored Core kits. Armored Core designs in general don't really appeal that much to me, in my personal taste. Uh, there's a few of the kits though that are pretty cool looking. This one is not too bad. I gotta say, if we got this one reprinted, you know, hopefully maybe this will be one that does end up getting reprinted with the re release of the new game. And hopefully maybe some new kits as well, but if this one gets reprinted, it may be one I have to consider taking a look at. It's a pretty cool design. And like the cannons on the back, which kind of give it a look sort of like wings on the back there with it just a, a array of cannons. It's a pretty cool design. There's that. And over here about Armor Core Brave New World. Another kind of um, uh, segment here of a novelization of an Armored Core story there. Pretty cool for you guys. All right, here we've got the guest bands. So yeah, we've got the HG kit from Bandai out. This is going back to Kotobukiya's 144 scale uh, plastic kit here of the guest bands. Mark II mass production model, Kwai. It should be Kai, but the English spelling there says Kwai for some reason, but it's uh, Kai Mark II mass production type Kai. I gotta say, this color scheme on the guest bands looks awesome. Generally, the design looks kind of mostly the same as like what we got with just the one from Bandai. Oh, I can see like some differences in there, but yeah, it's a pretty cool kit. I think a lot of the Kotobukiya Super Robot Wars kits are kind of few and far between these days. It doesn't seem like they reprint them very often, or at least they haven't for a while. So they're probably not very easy to find, but I would be interested in trying this one out if I can get my hands on it, just because I really liked the one from Bandai, the newer HG. This is much older now at this point with this model coming out in 2009, but I'm sure it's still a pretty nice model. So it'd be interesting to build that up and just kind of see how it compares. I have an idea of how it would compare, uh, but just out of curiosity, it'd be fun to build that if I can get my hands on it. Here's some other Super Robot Wars stuff that was coming out at the time. Some of the different prototype images of that. Uh, some more Super Robot Wars stuff, but some D-Style stuff here. Uh, Zoids, so this is interesting. This is the Taranto Town Technics high-end master model tarantula type wave 120 scale plastic kit remodeled by KB. So I'm not sure what the wave 120 scale plastic model kit is that was used for this. Man, honestly, I have no idea. And it's just interesting because 
It says Wave, but I know a high-end master model, that's HMM. That's what the Zoids kits are uh, from uh, Kotobukiya. That's what the Kotobukiya kits are. The HMM stands for high-end master model. So, I'm yeah, I'm a bit confused by this because I know this is not a model kit that exists as far as I've ever seen. Um, I've never seen a spider Zoids kit. I mean, obviously we have the Scorpion Death Stinger. I've never seen a spider one. I'm sure they exist. But it's actually got a few spiders. There's like the big one there in the middle of this diorama, and there's like a few smaller ones around there as well. But I've never seen model kits of this. And if you look at the next page here, there's a bunch of work in progress photos. It looks entirely all scratch build for the most part, just like kit bash different stuff to make these models. But I'm wondering why it says Wave 120 scale plastic kit. And it says remodeled, but I wonder what the like base kit is for that, why it's crediting wave i don't know because then we're here here we have the hmm iron kong which we not too long ago got the marking plus version of that you got the blade liger here some of the different uh, hmm zoids kits from kotobukiya but yeah a lot of really cool work in progress photos for that diorama but that's making me scratch my head a little bit wondering what exactly that is all right we got some transformer stuff here i recognize that as bumblebee but that's about the best I could do for you guys. I'm not a big Transformers fan either. Um, cool enough, but I just don't really know anything about Transformers, sorry to say. But we got a couple pages here of Transformers and then some other different stuff here. Robot uh, Spirits, Turn A Gundam, and then a very interesting looking Turn X that looks sort of translucent, kind of. That's kind of interesting. On some Full Metal Panic down here as well, the Arbalest. And we've got some really, in the time since this magazine came out, uh, till now, we've got some really cool HG kits from Bandai of the Full Metal Panic series. Those are also really, really nice. Next page here, we've got the Swordfish. we got some Mazinger stuff as well. Some more... No, that's not Mazinger. That's the, the Big O. Yes, so I'm not exactly sure what this is either. If this is a Chogokin, I believe. Maybe this is a Chogokin Big O. There is a Bandai model kit of, of the Big O which came out a long time ago, and I've I've just never seen it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, if any of you guys have it, you know, I'd be interested to know. But uh, we've got the new version coming out in the Motoroid line, if I remember correctly, right? The Motoroid uh, Big O is on the way this year, so that'll be cool. Looking forward to that. I was always a fan of that series back in the Toonami days. All right, so we're about... We're like just over halfway through this thing, so we still got a lot left. I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster here, maybe through the second half, because it's gonna be getting into a lot more stuff like this that I just don't really know about. I couldn't really talk too much about this stuff here with you guys, like uh, Super Sentai type stuff here, Ultraman. Interesting stuff. I guess if you're fans of these other different franchises, for me, I just can't really comment too much on it. Uh, I know that Strike Witches, this is like a doll or something, a Strike Witches doll figure. And we're going to be getting into some more like character figures from some different series that I just don't really know about. And eventually we'll get to maybe some military models and stuff like that. Again, it's just kind of stuff that's out of my expertise. But here's some more Macross stuff here. Some character figures and stuff from Macross, different merchandise. All right, let's see. We've got some Evangelion uh, figures up there. This looks like a lot of garage kit type stuff. So I think a lot of these are garage kits. This is just advertisements for stuff that was maybe coming out, uh, upcoming to be released in different, like uh, C3 or something like that. There's some really cool Gundam characters up here. We've got Lacus Klein and uh, Lieutenant Noin. I'm gonna wing there. These are like kind of, not like SD exactly, sort of SD, but more kind of like child proportion versions of these Gundam characters. You got uh, Rain and Allenby from G Gundam, and then uh, Kiel Haim from Turn A Gundam there as well. Those are really cool looking, to be honest. I've never seen those before. So they don't look like they're like posable figures. They look like they're just kind of, they have option parts that you can maybe just like make the pose slightly different by using a different option part for those, but those are interesting. Okay, half-age girls is what they're called here for those. Heroin spirits, I guess, so interesting. I'll have to look into that. Interesting, hmm, yeah, all right. So some other different garage kits here of, that looks like Border Break, and then these are just other different uh, character model kits there. This is probably all resin stuff, I believe. Resin garage kits, so that's all that good stuff. Some Figma here, Figma and Android stuff there from Max Factory. All right.
right, I'm just gonna kind of go through, kind of let you guys look through some of the stuff because there's a lot of different random things. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Buso Shinki, so Kotobukiya just recently released a new model kit uh, of the Buso Shinki uh, series. And they have another one that they just announced as well that's gonna be coming out later this year. And I actually just started building that kit, the, the white one, that uh, the Arnval. I just started building that today, actually. So that review will be, will be coming out for you guys in the near future. If you've been wondering if I'm gonna, if and when I'm gonna be reviewing that kit, should have that coming for you guys pretty soon. And I'm really, really looking forward to the black version that's gonna be coming out later this year as well. Looks quite cool. Uh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> this is uh, Dorotzel, and this is something from like some Disney series apparently. I've seen this around. I just don't really know anything about it. So there's a, I think there's a few different Figma of this, a few different versions of it, or I'm not sure, either that or just like a really similar looking one. But there's some different merchandise, figures and stuff, I guess, from whatever this series is, of this kind of like robot girl kind of character. But yeah, I don't know. If you guys know more about that, let me know. Just because I've seen it around all the time, I just don't really know anything about it. But you guys can let me know on that. As I said, we're probably gonna be getting into some more like uh, realistic models, military models here towards the end, uh, just because this is a, a hobby magazine, modeling magazine, and although those type of models aren't as popular as a lot of the stuff that we've seen in here so far, we probably will see a little bit of that here towards the back uh, as well. Like for example, here you've got like a train, truck, model kits, and still some sci-fi stuff in here as well. Uh, let's see. This is quite interesting. I guess it's a thing shaking hip. I guess it's a USB thing that you can plug in uh, and when you plug it in it shakes its hips. It's just a hip figure that's motorized and it shakes the hip. I don't know. That's an interesting product. I've never seen that before. Got some virtual lawn stuff over here. Never built any of the virtual lawn kits. I should build one of those at some point as well. Those are also uh, ones from Kotobukiya. I believe these are the Kotobukiya kits. Looks like, yeah. Yep, they are. Uh, I've never built any of those though. So if you guys have and you have any recommendations for a particular Kotobukiya virtual lawn kit that you may recommend, let me know. Cause I would like to build one at some point just cause I never have. It looks like uh, we're getting into more just random model kit stuff. Uh, Keroro here, let's see, this is the Helldiver, which we have a much more recent uh, Motoroid version of that as well, the Helldiver. Uh, Pokepla kit here of the Totodile Evolution series there in Bandai's Pokepla line. Some of the different releases from different companies, like this is the Frame Arms uh, Stylet, the Hoi Hoi San from Kotobukiya. This, I believe, is the uh, Volks, yeah, Volks model of the Bash there from Five Star Stories. All right, let's see what we got in here. So this is just gonna be advertisements for all sorts of different merchandise and figures and stuff from various different series. Uh, all kinds of different stuff there. Even some Star Wars in here as well. We got some Hasegawa Machining Krieger stuff down here. The Luna Diver, that's interesting. Just been recently, not too long ago, working on one of those as well. Some Godzilla type stuff. Now this is all in like the different, getting into the part of the book, part of the magazine, which is printed on like just, it's just black and white and printed on like a different paper. It's not like the nice high quality glossy paper that we have for like the first two thirds ish of that. Uh, some more about the Armor Corps Brave New World there. Even some advertisements here for some hobby supplies. This looks like it's maybe for some different stuff for like those racing cars. And all right, we'll see if there's anything of too much more interest here towards the back end. Probably not a whole lot. It's like an interview section here. It looks like an advertisement for Dengeki Hime. Mm, yep, okay. And yeah, all right, an interesting look back at 2009. Uh, interestingly, that's cool, Starship Troopers ship. It's kind of interesting, never seen that before. Uh, interesting to see how there was a lot of stuff that we've seen in here that like came out at that time in 2009, but then we've got like new versions of or like different variations of uh, in like the more recent last couple of years. Some like uh, fan submitted artwork here, just kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's always interesting to take a look back, see what was coming out at the time, what's come out since then, since some of these different releases. It's a kind of segment here of like a Super Ro Robot Wars uh, 
uh, manga. It's kind of cool. Here at the very end. But that seems like that's just about basically going to do it. Here's a little bit more of this manga than I was expecting. I was expecting like two or three pages, but there's quite a few pages here of that. Here towards the end. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this look back to 2009. It's re realistically not that long ago, but you know, it kind of feels like quite a long time ago at this point. Uh, but some cool stuff was coming out at the time. We've got a lot of cool stuff since then as well. And yeah, that's gonna just about do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What were some of your favorite things to see back from this issue of 2009 Dengeki Hobby? If you guys want to check out some more model kits, tools, supplies, and all that good stuff, you can check the link down in the video description below to USA Gundam Store. But as always, thank you so much for checking out the video. Like, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Leave a comment, leave a question, or just leave happily and have a good rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.